guys, it's Amanda over at Amanda Reads, and today I'm coming to you with something very different from what I usually post. Today's video is going to have nothing to do with books. Um, it's actually going to be kind of just like a chit chat about some things I haven't talked about on my channel before that have been going on for the past year and a half. A few months ago I posted where I've been and I talked about how I bought a house and how we have a dog and how we were doing renovations and all these reasons why I haven't been filming. But there was also another aspect of my life that was stopping me from making videos just because it was so consuming and so I wanted to talk about that today. This might be like the most boring video I've ever made which is totally fine, you don't have to watch it. Some of you may relate to this story or just be interested in what I'm talking about, so I'm not going to be offended if you don't watch. But first of all, the good news is that I am actually pregnant. So I am having a baby boy um, due around the beginning of September, and so I just want to talk a little bit about what it took to get to this point. Point. I have never really shared, but my husband has a genetic syndrome called holt Oram syndrome, and I'm not going to really get into specifics here because you can easily Google search the syndrome and find out about it. And so basically, if we have a baby naturally, it's a pretty good chance, it's a 50-50 chance that the baby will have the syndrome and then it's easy to pass on to the next generation. So it just was something that we wanted to avoid if we could. And luckily, one way to do that is through IVF or in vitro fertilization. So although neither my husband nor I has infertility, we knew that we would have to go through IVF for the genetic reason. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what my experience with IVF was like. Again, everyone's experience is different and some people do it for infertility reasons and not just for genetic reasons, um, but this is my story. Back in August of 2018, my husband and I met with a genetic counselor um, in Boston, which is about 25 minutes away from where we used to live and it's about 45 minutes to an hour from where we live now. And we met with her and kind of had to give her a family history of my husband's syndrome. In October, I had to get what is called an HCG, so I think what it was called. And that is where they check that you don't have like any blockages in your fallopian tubes um, and that like there's no physical reason why I wouldn't be able to get pregnant. Everything was fine with that. There was nothing concerning physically about why I wouldn't be able to get pregnant. And then we got into the genetics of it, which was my husband and his parents had to do DNA swabs, cheek swabs, and send the results to a lab in New Jersey, and then they build what is called a genetic probe. My little understanding is that basically they're mapping out how the syndrome looks in the DNA pattern, like where is it in the chromosomes, like how can you read if someone has the syndrome or not, specifically from his family, which is really cool when you think about it, um, but it takes a while. It takes about three months, and the technology is always changing, so if we want to have another kid, there's a chance we would have to like start over from scratch because the technology changes, but that's besides the point. We found out in January that our probes were ready, which meant that we could start our first cycle. So the hardest part that I had was dealing with insurance companies because I have a separate prescription filler in a different state and so I can't just order things to be sent to like a local pharmacy. I have to have it sent from a specialty pharmacy in a different state and so there was a lot of confusion about sending meds different places and it was just crazy. So we ended up not even being able to get everything in order to start our cycle in February. So we ended up starting our cycle 
in March. I had no idea really what IVF was before I was involved in it. I knew that it involved like giving yourself injections, but I didn't really understand the process of IVF. There's a lot that goes into it, obviously. I mean, that makes sense. It's, it's a big deal. It's a big thing. There's all these different meds. It's very specific. You have to take the medicine at a specific time. Like they'll be like, oh, between six and eight, you have to take this. Or between five and seven at night, you have to take this. Seven and nine at night, you take this. You have to be like really on the schedule and your life kind of revolves around your med schedule. So like what time you wake up in the morning, like when you have to have someone home to help you if you need help doing the injection. It really is time consuming, but I didn't realize how short the time would be. So when I started my cycle, I was doing two injections in the morning, or you start off with like one in the morning and one at night. And then when your hormone levels get to a certain um, level, you introduce a second injection in the morning, or it depends on your specific medication protocol, but I just introduced a second one in the morning, which was a lot more complicated because instead of just using a pen and injecting, I had to mix two vials together and so what I didn't realize was every day you're going in you're getting your blood work done you're getting ultrasound so they can see how many follicles are growing which will turn into eggs and it's kind of painful because your ovaries are getting you know enlarged because you're growing all these eggs inside of your ovaries that will then be withdrawn from your body after about like five days they told me I would be ready to schedule my egg retrieval. And I was shocked because I literally thought like it would be a month of injections before anything was ready. I didn't realize how quickly the process actually can be. They told me that, you know, we're gonna schedule your retrieval now. You have to take a trigger shot. And a trigger shot is, it can be different things. For my first two cycles, it was called Luprolide or Lupron. And that is just, you know, it's one shot. And then two days later, you get your retrieval or three days later so you take the trigger shot and then you go in the next day or the day after for them to check your hormone levels and make sure it worked and then that shot like tells your body like these eggs are going to be taken out of your body i don't i don't know how it works it's crazy but very cool science is so cool we found out that we were going to have my retrieval scheduled towards the end of march and so I didn't really understand what the retrieval would be. It's not that I didn't understand what I was getting into. It's that I didn't really understand what to expect. So you go in, you check in, and you like get in your like outfit and um, you know you get your IV because you're gonna go under anesthesia. And they bring you back and they retrieve the eggs. They basically withdraw all of your follicles from your ovaries and then they see how many follicles have eggs in them and so I think we had like 28 or something crazy and then they take sperm and then they inject all the eggs that are left with the sperm and they see how many fertilize now the difference between my IVF experience and someone who's going through it for fertility at least again my understanding is that when you are going through IVF for infertility they see how many eggs fertilize, and after day two or day three, you can schedule a transfer, which is when they put a fertilized embryo into your body and see if it attaches and becomes a pregnancy. The difference with my IVF cycle was that my embryos had to grow till day five before they could be biopsied to send samples to the lab in New Jersey for them to check the DNA and see which embryos had the syndrome. They had to mature to that level to be able to be biopsied and have their DNA examined. We had extreme drop off from like 20 something eggs, 17 fertilized and like we're growing and then we had four by day five. But we weren't concerned. It was a 50-50% chance of success that they wouldn't have the syndrome. It took two to three weeks to get the results back from the lab. So mid-April on my mom's birthday, we actually got the call. So the lab called and they told us, you know, we're really sorry, but all four of your embryos are affected by the syndrome. None of them are viable. 
And so that was just really hard because we had not anticipated it to be a problem. Like our IVF doctor didn't anticipate it to be a problem. The genetic counselor didn't anticipate it to be a problem. Everyone was under the impression like 50%. So we have four, we should have at least two, or at least one. Like there's really no reason to be concerned. So that was really hard, but the one thing that we were kind of determined about is that we were gonna keep everything a secret. So our parents knew that we had to go through this process, obviously, because Anthony's parents were part of providing the DNA, and my parents knew like this is what we'd have to do to have children. So no one was surprised that we were doing it, but we didn't tell them where exactly we were in the process. We told them like we started it, but no one knew that I was doing injections, no one knew I had had surgery, no one knew anything that was going on. And so that was our choice. It was a tough choice. We still stayed though, adamant that we wanted to you know surprise our families with the good news when it finally happened so we met with our doctor and we discussed changes and basically we just were told you know I don't think anything's really wrong it was just bad luck like statistics aren't always accurate 50% in this case it didn't work out so let's just do it again you take a month off to let your body get back into the natural rhythm of itself, kind of recuperate from everything that it's gone through with all the hormones, um, which is hard. The hormones would make me nauseous. Um, you know, it just, it, it definitely like messes with you. But again, it's all totally worth it. And even though it's hard, while you're going through it, you know why you're doing it, what, you know, your reason is, and so it makes it easier to deal with. In May, we decided to do our second cycle. So we did the exact same protocol where we started with the one med in the morning, one at night, and then after a couple days of my hormone levels were good, we went to two in the morning and one at night. The one thing that we had changed was we had done lower doses of the medicine. So the thought was it would take a little longer for the eggs to grow because we're gonna do a lower dose. Actually, we took one day less the second time for whatever reason. I was ready for my retrieval in less time, which was a little concerning because the whole point was to slow down the process and we had somehow sped it up. I scheduled my retrieval and we went in, we had the surgery and they took out almost exactly the same amount of eggs and Again, we had the same type of drop-off. I think less ended up fertilizing, but we still ended up with four. Those were sent away, and then in June, we got back the news that we had one embryo that was good for transfer, which was great news. It meant that we had one embryo with no syndrome that could be transferred. I did accidentally find out the gender because the plan was not to know the gender until we knew if it worked and I was actually pregnant because we knew it would be harder to know the gender and not have it work out. The reason that we could find out the gender so early is because they had done the testing on all the DNA and the chromosomes so they knew what chromosomes the baby had and they checked for other things too like other chromosomal abnormalities while they were checking for the syndrome because we decided to do that since they were already looking at the chromosomes. Why not look for other um, illnesses or syndromes that could occur? So they knew the gender. I accidentally found out the gender, but it was fine, and we decided that we were going to go ahead, and we still weren't going to tell anybody. We started prepping for our transfer, and I didn't know, again, that to do a transfer, you have to prepare your body with more meds. So what you have to do is take estrogen pills, and you have to take progesterone in some form. They have a cream, or they have an injection. I did not really want to do the injection so I went for the cream option which I ended up really disliking hated it don't recommend it personally it is what it is but I didn't want to do the injection because it's like a buttocks injection which really is just like your lower back area um, but they were like saying oh it's a really long needle and you're not gonna be able to do it by yourself your husband's gonna have to do it and we had talked about it and Anthony had decided it might be harder for him to do the injection just because he does not have thumbs so we were like okay let's just try the cream 
So we ended up doing that and our transfer was scheduled for the end of July, like the very last week of July because you have to be on those meds for a while. It's not like a one week thing like it is with the retrieval medicine. This is longer. Um, they measure your hormone levels, see if you're ready for transfer, all that stuff. So we went in for our transfer and we had the transfer and that's just done like you don't go under anesthesia they just use a catheter which you don't even feel um, and you literally watch it on a screen so you have an ultrasound screen and you just watch the embryo like go into your uterus and then you have what's called the two-week wait which is the worst thing ever and that is how long you have to wait before you can go back to have a blood test to see if you are pregnant, if the embryo actually attached or not, because it's just floating around in there when they transfer it, and you have to see does it actually attach to your uterus or not. So the two week wait was one of the most stressful times because you're literally like, am I pregnant or am I not pregnant? I don't know, should I be thinking of myself as pregnant or not? So we struggled with that. And we went in for our first blood test and it ended up being negative. So at that point, we found out that our transfer did not work. And after the first cycle not working out with no embryos being genetically syndrome free, and then our second cycle not working out with our one healthy embryo not transferring, we knew we'd have to go a third cycle and it was just really hard because again we were keeping it between ourselves and it became just like too much to kind of hold on to and with the people closest to us act like nothing was wrong so we ended up telling our parents what was going on we did have a couple people that knew um, we had Anthony's cousin who had been through it before kind of like mentoring us through it so she did know what we were going through um, and we had like one other friend that knew. Besides that, it was very hush hush just between us, but we realized, you know, this is like, we need support. This isn't something that's easy. It's not getting any easier. So we really need the support and we don't have to tell them everything we're going through step by step in the process, but it would just be nice to be able to go to them for support when we need it. We told them, you know, we'll keep you updated of what we're doing. We're not going to keep you updated with every single step, but we'll keep you updated and, and lean on you for support as needed. By the end of September, I started my third cycle. And this one we did completely differently. The Luprolide or the Lupron, which was my trigger shot for the first two cycles, actually became medicine that I took daily to start with. So it wasn't my trigger shot this time. I still took one of the medicines that I had taken previously for my first two cycles, but we completely eliminated a medicine that I had taken, a different medicine I had taken from the first two cycles. I was taking one shot in the beginning in the morning and night and then very quickly it went to the two in the morning and one at night. This time we were kind of in the mindset like just expecting it to not work which sounds really negative but we were kind of like if it works that'd be great but it's not going to be the end of the world like we've done we've had it not work like right away we've had it not work after the end of the cycle like after a transfer so we've had kind of like the worst of both cases. Like we've had both worst case scenarios, so we can handle that again if we need to, if it happens to work, great. We ended up having our retrieval at the end of September. We got the results back. They had gotten less eggs this time, um, and less had turned into embryos, and we only had three make it to day five to be biopsied. But the point of changing our meds was that we wanted the eggs to grow slower but be a higher quality. So we were kind of still on plan, like that was kind of the point, was to maybe not have so many that didn't work out, but to just have a small number that would. But we were a little discouraged because we're like, okay, we have less than we even had before and it wasn't good before. And then we got back the news that we did in fact have one embryo that was syndrome free. So that was really exciting. But then my doctor had no availability for over a month to talk to us about starting medicine for a transfer. So that was really hard knowing that like we have an embryo frozen 
that we just can't use until we can get in to see the doctors. We met with our doctor at the end of November and we started going on the medicines, the pills, the estrogen pills, and then this time we did the progesterone injections. The injections I was scared to get the second cycle where I did the cream, I was like, I don't ever want to do the cream again, let's just do these injections. Like, they're gonna suck, we're just gonna do them. We did them, Anthony was really confident in himself by this point because he knew how much I hated the cream, he's like, whatever it takes, we'll do it. I was like, if we have to have our parents come help us, we're gonna have our parents come help us. Whatever it takes, we're doing these injections. So we did that for a few weeks and then we found out that we were ready for a transfer on December 26th. So the day after Christmas, it was exciting um, to know that we were both on school vacation and we would have time to kind of like just relax and enjoy before the transfer happened. We went in for the transfer on December 26th and then again we had the two week wait to find out if the embryo had attached or not. I think we went on January 6th, it was a Monday, to have our first blood test and I had had a lot of cramping before which is also how I felt the first time we had the transfer. So I was feeling really discouraged and just, I didn't think that it worked. Like I had a lot of cramping the night before we had the test. I was just like, this, there's no way this is gonna be positive. I'm so discouraged, like we have to do this all over again. This is the worst. We had our blood test and we got home and then they like put it online before they call you. And I was just refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. And then at 11 a.m. it finally like popped up and the results were positive, the numbers were positive. And I didn't believe it, so we had a pregnancy test at home that I took, and then it said pregnant, and then I was like bawling, and we told our parents, and I was just like, I don't really think that this is true, because I just don't, I've been not feeling good, like I feel like I was getting my period, like there's, I don't think I'm pregnant. So then you go back two days later to get a second pregnancy test, blood test, for them to measure your hormone and make sure your level is going up. So I'm like, okay, well, there's no way it's going up because I just still don't feel right. Like something's wrong. So we went in and they did my blood test and the results came back that my levels had doubled, which is good. That's what you want them to do. And I'm just like, I don't, I really don't think this is right. So you go back a third time. You have to go back three times. You have to have three positive pregnancy tests for it to be considered like it is a real pregnancy, nothing has gone wrong. Um, so you don't wanna get like too excited until you have your third. So we had our third pregnancy test on that Friday and again, it was doubled. So the doctor calls and they're like, you're really pregnant, like this is real. And I was just floored, like couldn't believe it. And so then they scheduled us to come in for our first ultrasound on January 28th, which would be about five weeks pregnant for them to just make sure like everything was okay. It's not an ectopic pregnancy and all that stuff. We scheduled it, but in between January 10th and January 28th, I had cramping every single day. Um, I had bleeding and it was just so scary. And then they found out that I have O negative blood type which I guess can cause like antibodies that your RH negative, which means that you have antibodies that could attack like future pregnancies or something. And so I had to get a certain shot when I went on the 28th and I stopped bleeding after that. They say that the shot doesn't help you with bleeding, but every single person I've talked to that has a negative blood type who had bleeding in the beginning of their pregnancy stopped bleeding after the shot. So maybe it's not supposed to help you with it, but it did for me and everyone I've spoken to. So the first month of January was very scary because I just kept thinking I was having a miscarriage all month. Um, but luckily for us, when we had our ultrasound January 28th, everything looked fine. They thought I had a subchorionic hematoma, I think that's what it's called, which was causing my bleeding, but it wasn't like a full on one. So they said like, you're okay, just take it easy. It's fine. Then I graduated from my IVF program at the end of January and I was able to go somewhere closer to my house for the rest of our pregnancy and for like labor and delivery. And so that is kind of my whole story. And we had our doctor write down the gender in an envelope and we did a reveal with our parents last weekend on February 29th. Um, that was Anthony's dad's birthday. 
because uh, he's a leap year baby and that was also our 12 week mark so we decided to find out the gender at 12 weeks and like I said at the beginning of the video we are having a boy I was convinced it was a girl so I was very surprised Anthony thought it was a boy the whole time and so he was really excited, I'm really excited, obviously, I don't care what gender the baby is as long as it's a healthy baby, so we are having a baby boy, and that is what's been going on. So there's been a lot of things going on medically in the past year and a half, which has impacted all of my free time, besides all of the other things I spoke about a couple videos ago. I don't know exactly how much I'll be filming in the coming months, and you're probably sick of me saying that. and. I don't even know if any of you watch my videos anyways and really care, um, which is totally fine too. Everything is going well so far. We had an ultrasound a couple days ago and he was so cute and he looks so good and we're just really excited and kind of enjoying everything that comes along with this exciting time. I luckily haven't been sick. I've had a couple days where I felt nauseous, but I haven't actually like physically gotten sick, which I feel very lucky about. I haven't really had any heartburn yet. Like I'm knocking on wood because who knows what could happen. Um, but I currently have five people pregnant right now besides me at work. So I have plenty of support there, which is great. Um, where some of us are going through the same thing. Some of us are going through different things, but I am just so grateful that we were able to even do something like this and the reason I wanted to share my story is because no one knows, not everyone necessarily knows if they're going to have to go through a different route for pregnancies such as IVF. So I thought I would just share what that looked like for me because I had no idea what to expect going into it. I had spoken to people and kind of gotten an idea but you don't understand like all the details and like what it really entails and timing wise before you do it yourself. I just wanted to share it, put my story out there, and maybe it will help someone, um, who knows. I will see you at some point in my next video. Bye guys. I forgot to do an Addy update. And we are, what, eight months old? Nine months old? Did you know that you're eight months old? Did you know that? Oh, you kinda stink. So that's the Addy update, and I will see you later.